And then after that, take two more. And that keeps you safe from me because I talk with my hands. All right? So, guys, welcome to Animal Adventure. Before we get into the talk, I do ask a few questions. Number one, who's here for the first time today? Awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Who is here from out of the country today? Very good. Welcome, welcome. And who's here from out of state? Excellent. And who's here from Broome County? All right, all right, all right. Very good. Very good. So we're going to do the giraffe talk. Now, the way we do this, we talk a little bit about conservation in the beginning and the wild populations. Then we're going to go to about uh, pretty much like a giraffe 101, anatomy from the top all the way down to the bottom. After that, we'll talk baby talk. And then we're going to open up to some Q&A. You have questions, we have answers, and we might give them to you. All right? So that being said, the giraffes here at Animal Adventure, we'll introduce them real quick to you. Of course, the big guy on the end over there, that is Oliver. Oliver is, Oliver is our seven-year-old male giraffe. He's a reticulated giraffe. That baby you see running around that's not really a small baby anymore, that's Tajiri. We're going to talk about him in a minute. And then this big girl behind me, her name is July. <laughs> that is April the giraffe. April the giraffe is a 17-year-old female that is with Cap at this time, due in March of next year. So now... There are, uh, there's quite a bit of debate of how many subspecies of giraffe there actually is. If you ask uh, one scientist, they'll give you a different answer than the next. A lot of people are agreeing that there are, se uh, excuse me, four subspecies, but there's talks of seven or nine. Regardless, all giraffes are in trouble. The population decline in the past 20 to 30 years has been about 20 to 30 percent of the population. This is an expedited die-off rate. If we continue with this die-off rate, we will be without giraffes in the wild in another 20 to 30 years. That's scary, okay? And a lot of people, um, you know, we know of other animals that need conservation efforts and saving, but we forgot about giraffes. And I'm going to give you a little factoid here that's going to drive it home of just how few of them there actually are. Somebody yell out, what's an animal from Africa that we know needs conservation efforts besides giraffes? Okay, elephants, that's what I wanted to hear. There are four times more elephants on Earth than there are giraffes. Think about that. There's four times more elephants than giraffes. We're in trouble. We're at about 80 some odd thousand left, okay? In captive management programs, we're only looking at about 1,500. That's how few there actually are in captivity that are propagating the species. Now that's it. We're gonna jump into a little bit of Giraffe 101. Starting at the top, come on over, April, very good. Those two bumps, little horns on top of the head, what are those called? Ossicones. Good, three years ago, nobody knew what those were. All right, we're doing the right thing now. So those are ossicones, and you're gonna see a significant difference between the males and the females, and that's because of their use. Our males, well, let me talk about females actually first. Our females are much more muted, they're smaller. Why? They really don't use them for much, more or less uh, scratching an itch. However, our males' ossicones get much, much larger, much girthier, much longer, stronger structure because of their necking behavior. When two male giraffes fall in love with the same female, one of them has to become the victorious one that gets to breed, the other one has to move on. So they engage in the necking behavior, which is like a dominant struggle. If you've never seen a video of that, I encourage you to Google it, YouTube it, check that out. It's a very violent exchange of them swinging their heads, hitting each other with those ossicones in the face, the neck, the chest, and in the legs. Now, as violent as an exchange that is, Believe it or not, they generally do not hurt one another. Instead, it's more of a bruised ego situation. Mm -hmm. The loser obviously moves on, hoping to find another female that's open to breeding with him, and our victor gets to copulate or mate with our female. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is that tongue. April, come on over. <laughs> April, come on over. <laughs> April. <laughs> come on over. Very good. Let's show them what you're working with here. All right, get it up. Up, up, up. And out, out, out. Keep going, keep going, keep going. You got more than that in there. All right, that'll be suffice. Very good. So now the tongue on an adult giraffe can go anywhere from like 16 to 18 inches long. It is designed to more or less wrap around the thorny branches of the acacia tree and strip it of all the acacia leaves, which are the number one preferred diet of giraffes in the wild. Now the neat thing about those acacia leaves, they're also full of water. Okay, so it also keeps them hydrated. It does a dual purpose for them. Now, a neat thing about that tongue, what color was the tongue? Black. Purple, black, blue, okay? That's a really cool adaptation that occurred or evolved over time because giraffes spend the majority of their day browsing the trees. Now, to quickly address what that is, 
browsers browse trees, grazers graze grass. So they browse the trees all day long. That tongue is sticking out of their mouth. If it's sticking out all day, what's going to happen in the sun? It's going to get sunburned. So they adapted and evolved over time to develop that color pigment, which actually protects the tongue. Now that coloration changes really only the first six to eight inches. After that, it's as pink as my tongue and yours. That's how you know it's a true adaptation. Now, another neat thing about giraffes are the teeth. A lot of people ask us, can they bite you? Well, yeah, but not really, okay? Because of what they eat, they don't have teeth on the top in the front. They have teeth on the bottom in the front, much like many other herbivores, grazers, and browsers. But of course, in the back of the mouth, they do have molars on top and bottom. Now, those molars are for chewing their food and their cud. They are ruminant, which means they are a multi-chambered stomach animal. Name me another species or animal that has multiple chambered stomach. Cow. Cow, exactly. So giraffes are the same way. So what happens is they eat the acacia leaves the first time around and get the first round of nutritional value. They take it down and then bring it back up. They regurgitate it as cud is what we call it. They chew it again and get another round of nutritional value from that. Bring it back down and then step three is when Corey cleans it out of the yard. Okay? <laughs> so that's what those teeth are really used for. Okay, Ch uh, churning and burning that cud in the back there. So now we're going to take them down to the neck. April, come on over. Come on over. Come on. Come on. Just take your sweet time. Very good. Diva. All right, so now this giraffe neck, it's a big, big, massive structure, okay? Now, in the human neck, we have seven vertebrae inside of our neck. Now, some of you know the answer here. Do not yell it out. Now, giraffes have a much longer neck than we do, so you would think they have a lot more vertebrae. How many bones do you think they have in their neck? Do you have a guess? 84. 84, precisely. <laughs> Good guess. What do you think? Do you have a guess? Help her out, Dad. Seven. What'd you say? Fifteen. Fifteen. Very good. Very good. What do you think? Uh, eight. Eight. All right. Do you know? What's your guess? You can't hide from me. Give me a number. Pick a number. One dollar, she says. All right? And you in the back, buddy. How many bones do you think she has in her neck? You have seven. How many do you think a big giraffe has? Eighteen. Okay. Giraffes have seven vertebrae in their neck. The same as a human being, it's just the vertebrae are much, much larger. The average giraffe vertebrae in length goes from about my wrist down to my elbow. It's just much, much larger around. Why? Well, we already talked about the necking behavior. That's that violent exchange of them swinging necks into one another. If they had a hundred bones in there, okay, they'd be a weak structure. The more breaks in a chain, the weaker it is. So now there are less breaks, still seven bones, just very, very strong and sturdy to uh, have the structure <coughs> to withstand those, uh, those uh, blows from the necking behavior. Now, another neat thing about the neck, it talks about more like the circulatory system, the blood flow. Now, if you stand up out of a chair too quickly, what happens? Vertigo. You get dizzy, okay? Giraffes, you would think, would experience that. They're up in the trees. They're down on the ground. They're swinging those necks. Well, actually, there are flaps and valves inside of that neck that actually control that blood flow to make sure that doesn't occur. So it works together to make sure they never have an issue. Now, in the event you have to sedate a giraffe, and you really want to avoid it, they don't do really well under sedation, but in the event you have to <coughs> sedate them, a team of people are assigned to the head to keep it raised above the heart, because if not, those flaps and valves don't function properly, and you will have an issue there. Now, talking about what's sending that blood up and down, it's that big heart they have. The heart of a giraffe weighs about 25 pounds. It is a huge muscle. All right, big, big muscle in there that's working to get all that blood throughout the body. Now, quickly, we'll talk about the coat here and the pattern and appearance. Now, giraffes are like unique little snowflakes or fingerprints or zebra that no two giraffes actually have the same pattern. They're each unique. However, a mother or father can pass their likeness on to their calves. So we all know April has what kind of spotting or pattern in her? Hearts, okay? Tajiri also has hearts in his pattern. So again, they'll never be the same, but there can be that likeness. Now, another neat thing about the skin is that it actually produces uh, 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 an insect repellent, okay? Because guess what? In, in Africa, nobody's putting bug spray on them, all right? <coughs> and people ask us all the time, how do you treat for fleas and ticks and bugs and things like that? They naturally do it. Another adaptation to help them. And one more neat thing people ask us sometimes, what do these spots do? What's the purpose here? 
In Africa, they actually help them thermoregulate the body. It releases the heat to help them keep cool or stay warm, okay, whatever they need to do. Uh, and it's what, uh, if you ever get them under a thermal imaging camera, you can actually see the pattern in those cameras where the heat releases. Very neat thing. Okay, talking now, we'll go down to the legs. Now, the legs of a giraffe, on average, from hoof to chest, is about six feet in height. That goes about the same for every giraffe, okay? Six feet from the hoof to the chest. Now, those legs allow our giraffes to run far and run fast if they need to. They can run about 35 to 45 miles an hour. Now, certainly, it's not going to be a marathon. It's more of a sprint for them if they have to get away from a predator. Now, a predator, let's address a few of them. Somebody yell out one of their predators. Lions, all right. Give me another one. Hyenas. Hyena, very good. Cheetahs are a little too small for giraffes. <coughs> Crocodiles. Crocodiles. Crocodiles, very good. A lot of people forget them. Okay, we're looking for two more. Leopard. Leopards, very good. And the last one. They're small, but they work together. Wild dog. African wild dogs, very good. Depending on the age of a giraffe, the health and so forth, smaller animals can take them down. Your cheetahs prefer to actually hunt small things like hares and gazelles and so forth. They don't have the fight in them or the jaw strength to take down the big guys. So anyway, that being said, in the event that a giraffe cannot run away from its threat, they will fight the threat. How do they do that? With a kick. The kick is strong enough to actually shatter the jawbone or the skull of a lion. Okay, that's how strong that kick is. Now, you might have seen on the giraffe cam where April suggests us to get out of her stall with a kick here or there. It was only a suggestion because if she really felt threatened, she's more than capable of kicking us, and our sternum, our body, would never withstand a blow from a giraffe kick. It would be fatal. That is why we don't share space with Oliver. He is a bull. Whether it's a bull like bovine, whether it's a bull camel, bull elephant, or bull giraffe, they have two motivations, and you don't want to be on either end of them. Okay. So now, that being said, let's go right down to the hooves. Now the hooves are much like our fingernails. They're constantly growing. So in the wild, again, does anybody clip their nails for them? No. So the natural terrain is what keeps them rounded and healthy. All right, the terrain in Africa is nothing like the rich upstate green topsoils that we have here. <laughs> Therefore, we use a crushed stone and sand mix in the exhibit, which helps maintain the hooves naturally. Now, in the event we can't stay ahead of the growth rate, what do you do? You do give them a pedicure, all right? If you can teach a giraffe to paint, you can teach them to get a pedicure. So what we do is target training where April or Oliver or even Tajiri would present their hoof up on a pedestal, and then Dr. Tim or a trained farrier would come in with power tools or hand files and actually trim their hooves back down. Think of a horse. If you don't maintain a horse's hooves, they become lame. Same thing for a giraffe, all right? So, Sherry, how was that? Good, we're on track. So now we're gonna do a little bit of baby talk. Baby talk, baby talk, baby talk. So now, the average gestation, the average pregnancy length for a giraffe is 15 months. If it's April the giraffe, it is 16, 16 17, 17, 18, 19, all right. So the average gestation is 15 months. After 15 months, that mom is ready to give birth to her baby and she does it from a standing up position. They do not lay down. So we told you, how far of a fall is that? Six feet. You're taking notes. Good. Yeah. All right. Six feet from mom to the ground. Now, when we were in the height of giraffe hysteria, we got all kinds of emails and suggestions on how we should soften the fall for the baby. You could line the stall with mattresses. What about big inflatable pads or pillows? No. Okay. That fall, like I said, designed by nature for three things. Number one, if the embryonic sac is not yet ruptured, it ruptures during the fall. Number two, it severs the umbilical cord. Carnivores, primates, they'll chew that cord. Herbivores, it ruptures or, or severs when it does fall, okay? And then the last thing is, back in the day when you had a baby, the doctor picked it up by its feet, and what did he do? Spank it on the bum, okay? This is Mother, mother Nature's spank on the bum. What it does is it stimulates that calf. It drives that first breath into those lungs, stimulates it to start breathing on its own, all right? So now that calf is on the ground. Ideally, you want the calf on its feet within 60 minutes. Africa is not a, a very forgiving place. You need to be up on your feet very soon. Tajiri was up in 45 minutes, yeah. our little overachiever, okay? <laughs> after they're up on their feet, they have to nurse immediately after. <laughs> Show off. <laughs> Show off. Zoomies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give you a treat for that. That was good. <laughs>
<laughs> that was good. That was really good. <laughs> We've been working on that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so anyway. So where was I? So we want them to nurse very soon after. Why? Colostrum. All right. Yeah. Colostrum is that first fluid substance that it's going to receive from its mother. That colostrum is full of all the antibodies that this animal needs to thrive. Without colostrum, mammals, whether it's a giraffe, a, a monkey, a camel, whatever, they will fail to thrive. So that colostrum is crucial to the survival of that calf. Okay, good. 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 All right. More often. <laughs> so, within three hours, the calf can run <laughs> with the rest of the herd, okay? Now, what do you call a herd of giraffes? Tower. A tower. tower, okay? A herd is called a tower. Now, that tower consists of the females and their young, their immature young, all right? As a bull calf begins to mature, what does it do? Leave. Moves to North Carolina. Yeah. That's right? right. <laughs> they leave the mother. This is designed by nature, okay, for a few different reasons. Number one, this calf cannot grow up with its mother. If a bull calf grows up with its mom and its sisters, what's going to happen? They'll breed. All right, they're going to breed. It's going to muddy the genetic integrity of the tower. They don't want that. So that calf moves on. Now, the other he thing is, is that <laughs> after a while, once that young bull calf matures, dad is also going to see him as a threat. What happens? They fight. A dad and a baby, an exchange of necking, that would kill that baby. They're not sized up appropriately, okay? So that calf moves on. They actually develop a nomadic bachelor lifestyle, eh, gentlemen? Yeah? All right. <laughs> nomadic bachelor lifestyle. And they, mo they mosey around the savannas, and they look for females to breed with. That's the way this all works, okay? So now... Sherry, what am I forgetting? Yeah? I don't know. I think we're doing good. Let's talk about the size of our babies. There we go. Now, the average baby giraffe is born about 6 feet tall and weighing about 150 pounds. Tajiri was born about 5 feet 9 inches, and the estimation was he was born at about 134 pounds. All right? You're full of it. Fall <laughs> temperatures are awesome at the park. Trust me. So anyway... When we say the average calf weighs 150 pounds, we often see that there's babies born that are 120, 130, 140. He's taking your limelight. Hey, I just, <laughs> nothing, nothing new there. I play second fiddle to giraffes all the time. So if these calves are averaging 100 pound, 150 pounds, all right, a lot of the ones we see are born below 150. That means somewhere there are these behemoth calves being born. And you wonder, where is that occurring? Well, this year at Milwaukee Zoo, a female calf was born that weighed in at 175 pounds. Big calf, poor mama. All right? Yeah. Now, another neat thing I want to talk about, which I forgot about earlier, was the ossicones on our calves. When a calf is born, the ossicones are very, very soft cartilage, and they lay flat on the head for obvious reasons, okay? And then after the first week of life, those little ossicones stand up, all right, those are those little black tufts of hair that you see that are real cute on the babies. And then they start to harden and form and then become a bone-like structure that does fuse to the skull. All right. <laughs> All right. So, maturity on our giraffes was yesterday, apparently. Super zoomies. Maturity on giraffes, males mature on average at three years of age, but that testosterone starts flowing now, yeah. okay? <laughs> and then our females generally mature at about an average of five years of age, okay? A little bit different. Now, one last thing, we'll talk quickly about uh, longevity or lifespan. Now, back in the day, the average in, in, in the wild was in the teens. That was a good number. All right, we're starting to see them now a little bit longer, touching towards their 20s. Well, in captive management, about 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 years ago, 20 was a good number. If you hit 20, you were doing good. But now with the advances in nutritional care and veterinary care, our calves... <laughs> Excuse me, our giraffes are now living into their late 20s without issue. In fact, females in the past two years at the age of 25, 26, 27 have pro been producing healthy calves. Wow. So we're seeing giraffes live longer and longer because of the advances in captive management. 
Rarely do you see a giraffe go into its 30s. I believe Cheyenne has a zoo that, or a giraffe that's uh, 33 years old. All right, probably one of the oldest ones out there. All right, rarely do you see them hit 30. So on that note, now that everyone's settled, we're going to turn it over to some Q&A with you guys. If you have a question, go ahead, throw your hand up. I'll call on you. Anything is fair game. Uh, just a matter of we'll answer it. That's all. Go you didn't discuss pheromones. Pheromones? And peach drinking. Okay. <laughs> so let me preface that For here. For people who haven't noticed. Some, some people ask us why you're not allowed to kiss the giraffes anymore. Why can't you feed a carrot in the mouth, okay? Well, the way that giraffes test one another to see, for example, if a female is open or in heat, all right, or if a young male giraffe is hitting <clears throat> pubescence or maturity, what they do is they bend down behind the other one and get a big old mouthful of urine, okay? That's why you don't kiss our giraffes anymore. <laughs> and what they do is they actually curl that lip in the response, I always butcher the name, but it's Fla Flamen's response, where they curl that lip up. It brings that smell, those pheromones into the nostrils and so forth. They process it and then they can determine what is going on with the other giraffe in the herd. Okay, don't kiss the giraffes, all right? Is that what you were looking for? For people who don't know. Yes, very good. All right, other questions, hands up, go ahead. You're not gonna let me off that easy, are you? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. How can you tell she's pregnant? Very good. It's very hard to tell, especially in the first five months. Physically, you're not going to see much change. Even in the next five months, not much change. It's a lot of behavior observation. So what happens with the keepers? Number one, we track the mating behavior. Giraffes cycle or go into estrus like every 15 to 17 days. All right? Oh, now you're back. All right? <laughs> every 15 to 17 days. So what we observe is the mating behavior occurring. And we mark it down on a calendar, and then we wait for another 15 to 17 days, and we see if it's happening, if the, if the female's standing for the male or not. And then, okay, we, we didn't see any receptive behavior. Let's count another 15 to 17 days past that. Okay, we definitely didn't see any, and it gives us a projected con con conception date. Projected, all right? As you know, we do make mistakes, all right? But this year, they were on camera the whole time. We have it pretty locked down to a specific day, even time, okay? So it's a lot of observation in the beginning. Due date, March, all right? Our window of opportunity, or I guess our window of expectation is going to be the month of March. Uh, we're looking at like an early spring calf, all right? You, when I say that, you know that means June or July. <laughs> Let's be honest. All right. If we hit April 1st again, it's not fun because then it's a big April Fool's joke. No, yeah, no, that's yeah. true. That's that was true. a fun day. Yeah. All right. Any other? Qu uh, I'm gonna go over here first. Yes. I. Her question is: Does Taj perhaps know there's a pregnancy going on? <laughs> <laughs> Does Taj know there's a pregnancy going on? I, I wouldn't suggest so much her body. Um, he, he's not mature yet. I'm sure he can sense through the pheromones. Perhaps there's a change of something going on. But that's not his focus. His focus right now is a lot of discovery and so forth. Oliver is definitely the one that can tell through that those pheromones and so forth that something's off and different. Mind you, he still tries. Uh, but he's not successful. So I don't know if I'd credit Taj with actually knowing there's anything going on yet. Yes? How soon after the birth of the calf will they be on display? Okay, so how soon after the birth of the calf will uh, April and, and new baby be on display? Really is going to depend on the process. If it's a if it's a good good delivery, good 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 um, nursing behavior, everything's going good. I imagine three four days, five days, and then they'll be back on exhibit because more or less um, it, it, with us, like they can go right out into the yard. Because in Africa, guess what? They're dropped, they're up, and they're living, all right? Same thing here. As long as everything is good, then fine. Sure, we'll limit dad's interaction in the beginning again to be safe about that, all right? Not to have any issues. But we'd probably let them bond in privacy for three, four, five days and then let them go out. Yeah, so if we're expecting a March baby, by all means, the park won't be open just yet. But by the time the park opens, baby will be out. Yeah, knock on wood, as long as everything goes great. So, yes, sir, what's going on? So very good. How do you determine where your calf is going to go? All right. With us, it, uh, it was actually a very long process. We've been working on this for about six, seven, eight months already, believe it or not. So what we have to do is, number one, try to align ourselves with another facility that has the same goals for us. They also have a plan in place that's going to further the propagation efforts, have the education about conservation. So it's more or less a marriaging of ideals in the beginning, 
then making sure you have compatible giraffes. For example, where Tajiri is going, females are already being lined up to join him. All right. We didn't want to send him out to be a lone male hanging out being a bachelor the rest of his life. He's got great genes. Let's pass those on. So that was part of our decision as well. And then, uh, honestly, um, uh, quite, quite frankly, they're good people. Uh, mm -hmm. They came up to the park. They met Tajiri a month before we made any decisions. We talked about plans. They were receptive to everything. And on top of it, for Taj, for Taj specifically, uh, they embraced the fans too. They want to keep you guys involved. So that was a big thing to us also. So, and uh, so, and, and, and so, like, what, what happens? What's the exchange? What's going to go on? Right now, he's going to go join a program. And with success down the road, that will allow us to perhaps uh, increase our herd or, or diversify our herd. So hopefully with successes with Tajiri, that'll bring successes back to the park. Yeah. Yes? If Tajiri was a female, would you still be? So if Tajiri was a female, would he still be leaving? Yes, but maybe not as soon. Remember, a female's going to mature later. I said about five years. So she really wouldn't have any uh, you know, estrogen flowing, things like that, until about four years old. So she could stay a little bit longer. If anything, we might get a little crowded and have to make some decisions based on that. But a female could have a prolonged time. However, she would still have to leave because dad is related to daughter. Yes. If, you, if she does have a female, do you think you could do a trade program where you could... Exactly. So his question is, if she has a female, do you think there could be a trade or an exchange there? 100%. Because Jordan contacts uh, your zoo in uh, Hawaii. Well, not Hawaii. But, Orlando. Uh, Orlando. Ohio, we'll say. All right. Orlando. Orlando, Florida. And we say, hey, you know, uh, you've got a new female. We have a new female. Let's diversify bloodlines. From that point, what we would do is actually track backwards to make sure that there isn't any close relation. And if it's a good fit, then you could swap out no problem. And that's a little bit more of an ideal situation. Facilities generally have one bull, maybe two. You don't want six bulls. Right. So it's a little bit harder with the males. Yes, sir. What kind of truck do you use to transport a giraffe? What kind of truck do you use uh, to transport a giraffe? Special trailer. Convertible cars. All right. <laughs> convertible. You got a convertible? All right. Bring it on where I'm back. All right. So a giraffe trailer is a very specialized trailer. Now, mind you, you don't just call the farmer down the road to haul a giraffe. There's actually uh, probably about 10 firms in the country that actually move zoo animals, exotic animals, for a living. They move rhinoceros, hippos, giraffes, giant water buffalo. So these giraffe trailers, they're large trailers that are a little bit different than what you see on the highway. For example, if you go on the highway, you look under a tractor trailer, you can see the car on the other side, right? Not a giraffe trailer. That thing goes right down darn near to the ground. A little bit of clearance off the ground. That makes it a very easy step for a giraffe to go onto it. Now, the highway maximum height is 13 feet, 6 inches, all right? That's as tall as your trailer can be, all right? So what happens? A giraffe goes in there. Well, generally, you don't move 18-foot giraffes, all right? Generally, you move younger giraffes, okay? But then again, if you have to move a 15-foot giraffe, we'll say, it's okay, because giraffes don't walk around like this, all right? They walk around like this. They're leaned forward, heads down. Kangaroos are 6 feet tall. You would never know it because they spend their entire life hunched over, okay? So what happens is they step into the trailer and they either shuffle them to the front or the back. They move, they, they, they do their natural positioning forward. They eat their hay and they transport. A responsible hauler stops every hour or so, checks on the animal, keeps on moving. No problem. So it's a specialized trailer built for giraffes with a professional team. Yeah. How do you make sure the head stays down when the bridge is approaching? Well, there is a top on it. There is a top. There is a top. There are open air trailers uh, that do exist. It's usually short transports in Africa from preserve to preserve. But uh, no. Yeah, thank you. Low bridge. Right. Yes, sir. How would you transport them if they're from a different country? How would you transport them if they're from a different country? Again, if you're going to move a giraffe that's, uh, say, from here to Japan. All right, generally it's a baby giraffe. They travel much better than an older giraffe, okay? So smaller, if it's small enough, it can go onto a cargo plane, all right? If it's a bigger giraffe, they can go on cargo ships, all right? So it's ship or by plane, generally by plane, because it's a much faster voyage uh, for them versus sailing across the oceans. So, yep. I just saw recently a bunch of racehorses being loaded on a uh, DHL uh, plane. Anybody else see that video yeah. online? Hey, they're just standing there going up on a plane. They were they were good, you know. Uh -huh. Any other questions I can help you out with? Yes. Do you think April has a sense that it's gonna be time for Taj to move on and start <coughs> Do we think April perhaps has a sense that it's time for her to Jerry to move on? Yeah, she'd like him to go probably. <laughs> <laughs> Not because it's like, all right, son, it's time for you to go. But it's more or less uh, 
she needs to refocus. Her, yeah, number one, her caloric output, all right, needs to be developing a fetus, not continuing to nurse this calf. That's why you're seeing her more and more reluctant, reluctant to nurse him. Now, mind you, Tajiri was weaned months ago. He could have been separated from mom months ago and survived. He'll still steal, steal a snack here or there, all right? But at this point, she's kind of done with him. He obviously could go on without having uh, any flinch of it. So I don't think it's more or less like, all right, it's time for you to go. It's, but it's like, all right, enough. <laughs> no, just don't be right here. I don't know. No. Yeah. Yes? <laughs> Okay, so on the giraffe cam, you can see sometimes where Tajiri will nudge his mother, all right? But if you rewind about a year ago, she used to nudge him, all right? The tables have turned. So what it was back in the day is that's mom saying, get up instinctively, because when you're on the ground, you're vulnerable to threats, but also get up, it's time to nurse. Well, now Taj is saying, come on, mom, get up. I want, I want to nurse. And, and it becomes an annoyance uh, to her. So, yeah, um, sure, he, he, he learned it probably, but, yeah, yeah, stinker. Any other questions, guys? Yes, ma'am. I don't know how long we'll stay. We're going to make sure he gets adjusted. So it could be a couple days. It could be three, four, five days. The reality of it is is that. Young bull giraffe, natural transition, time to separate. He'll get in there, and I'll be very honest with you, safe, secure, and fed, happy. Yeah, so I imagine it'll be a relatively easy transition, probably a couple days. That's what I would guess. Yes? Have they told you how long, approximately, before he gets any girlfriends? Uh, it all depends on when they can move him. Uh, the, one, the first discussion was that his girlfriend would be there within weeks, um, but we'll see. We'll see. There's two girls that are actually lining up, and I'm probably saying more than I should. So <laughs> it's not my facility to comment on, but the one female is a couple years older, which would allow them to mature at about the same time. That's, <laughs> so that's the sponsor. Older, the male. Well, naturally, because you, you don't want to, I guess, um, I don't want to say waste time, but be buying time, because now you're going to have a bull giraffe that wants to mate and a young female that's not ready for it, and his his interest in her could become a little detrimental, not nothing severe. But if there's only one or two females in there, Motivation, you know what I mean? So. Exactly. Ideally, you want them maturing at the same time, or you bring in an older female like we did with April, and uh, Oliver was ready, and they fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> fell in love very quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, any other questions? Yes, sir. I just want to say thank you for all your work here. Same here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, Again, and we appreciate that, but keep in mind, without you guys, we're an animal park with nobody here. All right, so thank you for being here. You guys keep us open, so thank you, thank you. And I uh, guess anything else before we wrap it up? Grab that young lady off that fence for me. Thank you. Yes. How'd you pick the location? How'd I find this spot? Okay. I'll make this as quick as possible. So uh, I used to drive by this farm often, and I watched it uh, go from a dilapidated dairy farm to a, uh, a, a barn or a farm that a guy was putting horses on. And he was rebuilding it, it was very nice, and it was really the view of the marsh that caught my interest when I would drive by here. Fell in love with the property. Fast forward two years, okay? I wanted to find a little hobby farm where I could have a camel. That's the truth of this. <laughs> Whatever, some people want dogs and things. I want a camel. So long story short again, um, I, I wanted to acquire a camel, told a realtor friend, uh, you know, find me a little hobby farm, and that was probably a year or two prior to actually finding it. I woke up on a Thursday morning, I'll remember that, looked, and it said, farm, uh, 20 acres on Martin Hill Road. I thought, you gotta be kidding me. Is it that farm? I jumped out of bed, got in my car, drove up here, there was no signs yet, it was that new of a listing, did some math with the houses, Did went on the tax map, yeah, it's that farm, called the realtor, and that's how it happened. Before we closed on the property, Max the camel, the camel I fell in love with 10 years prior that made me want to own a camel someday, went up for auction. And I went and I acquired Max, brought him here, and the rest is history. And that's what inspired the park. Yep, 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 yep. All right, any other questions? Yes? I will do photos with you as soon as I'm done here. I'll be happy to do some photos on the deck, and I believe there's a group that wants to meet real quick down below. Happy to do that, guys, for you. And I just want to say hi to my friend Jan. Where's Jan? Hi, Jan. I heard you were here yesterday, too. I just want to say hi and welcome, right? Thank you. Yes, very good. Okay, guys, again, thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. And if you want to make a friend, carrots are over here. All right?